Today we're going to learn how to insert data inside our database directly from our website using PHP code. And as you guys can see in front of me here, I have the same code as we did in the previous episode, where we learned how to select data from inside the database. And that's because we're going to use basically the same code in order to do the same thing when we want to insert data inside our database. So as you guys can see in front of me here, I have all the, the same code inside the index file. I have the database connection inside my DBH file. And I will also include the database code to our actual database inside database code.sql. Now, if you guys don't have these files and you want to get access to them, maybe because you didn't watch the previous episode, you can go ahead and download these files in the description so you can actually follow this lesson. So just for the sake of it, let's actually go ahead and go through the code from the previous episode. So the basic thing we have here is the database connection at the top of our index file. So we can actually get access to the database, which is in here. And inside the body tags, we just simply wrote a SQL statement that will actually you know, do something with the database. And then the next line, we just simply query this SQL statement. So it actually does something to the database using the connection we have down here. And then on the next line, we just simply check if we had any kind of results from this select statement. If we did not have a result, it's not going to run the if statement down here. Now, if we did actually have a result, it's going to run a while loop that will actually assign all the data to variable row and spit it out inside our website. So when we want to insert data instead of selecting data, what we're basically going to do is we're going to go ahead and delete this if statement here. We're going to delete the result check like so. So we only have these two lines of code. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the select statements. And what I'm going to change it to is the insert statement I have inside my database code file here called database code.sql. I'm just going to go ahead and word wrap this for you so you can actually see everything. So I'm basically just going to copy this code we have here, go back inside my SQL statement inside my index file and paste it in here and save it. And that's basically how we insert data inside the database. So just to explain what exactly is going on here, basically we just have an insert statement that I insert instead of the select statement. And then below here, we just simply say we want to uh, run a MySQL I underscore query function that simply queries this code and does something with it inside the database. Now, since we're not selecting anything, we basically just need to run the code and then it simply creates the user called Daniel Nelson, blah, blah, blah. And puts them inside the database. So basically, we don't actually need to have the variable here. We just need to actually run this function down here called MySQL underscore query, and this will actually work. So this is basically how we can insert data into our database directly from our website using PHP code. But I know so many people will ask me, how do we actually use this inside a practical example? Because right now, I just sort of hand wrote the data inside the single quotes in here. How do we actually do something inside a website that will insert data from, for example, a form into the database? Let's actually go ahead and go inside the body tag and I'll show you how to do this. I'm going to go ahead and create a form. And inside this form, I'm going to create a couple of inputs. So we're going to say we have an input called text. We're going to have a name for this input. This one is going to be at least the first one is going to be the first name of the person. We're going to have a placeholder called first name. And again, this is just basic HTML code. So you guys should know how to do this by now. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste this input statement a couple of times. So we have for all the inputs we need to have inside our insert statement. So we need one for the first name, one for the last name, one for the email, one for the username, and one for the password. Now for the password one, I'm going to go and change the type to password. I'm going to change the names of all of them. So we have the second one up here called last, which is last name. I'm going to change the placeholder to last name. I'm never actually sure if this is one word or two words because English is not my native language, but I'm just going to go ahead and write it one word. The third one is going to have a email. So we're going to write email as the name. We're going to write e dash mail as the placeholder. Inside the fourth one, we're going to write the username. So it's called UID, which is what I usually call the username. And then we're going to write username inside the placeholder. And again, this is basically if you want to create a user for, for example, a website. Inside the last one, we're going to write PWD for the password. And then inside the placeholder, password. Like so. 
Now, just for the heck of it, let's actually go ahead and include a break in between each one of them because I know once we do actually get inside the website, it's actually going to spit these out on one line and I want them on separate lines. So I'm just going to go ahead and include a break here. I'm going to go ahead and include a button at the end because we need to actually click something to actually activate this form. So I'm going to say sign up which I think is two words in English. Inside the button tag, I'm going to go ahead and include a type set to submit. So it actually registers that we submitted this form. I'm going to set a name equal to submit. Now, the reason I'm including a name inside the button is because once I do actually want to check if the user clicked this button, I want to use the name in order to actually check for the submit. I'll show you guys in a second. Now, some of you people ask me, uh, what about uh, required the attribute called required inside the inputs uh, why do we not just include those using html if you want to make sure that the person actually filled out all these fields because the way we would typically do it is using psp code we would actually go ahead and check if the user did actually type in everything inside the inputs well when it comes to writing code in html or javascript or jquery if i were to write the required attribute inside the inputs using html uh, we can actually get around it inside the developer tool inside most browsers. So it's not entirely secure when we use required inside uh, HTML. Uh, so we don't want to do it only the HTML way. We actually want to do it the PHP way or with some other kind of backend language because it's much safer. Okay. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and go inside the form tag and say, okay, once I hit the submit button, I want to run some kind of PHP code. Now the PHP code right now is actually down here, but I want to create a separate file and insert this code inside that file um, in order to actually run that script once I click the button, because right now it's just gonna run this code as soon as I refresh the browser and I don't want to do that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and set an action, which is going to be the path to the actual file that I want to run once we do actually click the submit button. Now inside my root folder, I have a index file. I have the database code you guys can use if you want to copy my code from the database. And I have an includes folder. Now inside this includes folder, I have my database connection. And like I said in the previous episode, all the code that goes inside the includes folder, for me at least, is going to be code that is not a direct page inside the website, but instead just some PHP code that gets run in the background that we don't actually physically see inside the website. So I'm gonna go ahead and include a path to a file that we haven't actually created yet inside the includes folder called, well, we're gonna say includes because we need to point to the file or to the folder. And inside this folder, we have a signup.inc.php file, which again, like I said, we haven't actually created yet. Let's actually go ahead and make sure we write that correctly, like so. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and include a method. So we need to actually decide how secure do we want this information to be when we do actually send it to our signup.inc.php file? Right now, we're gonna do that using a method attribute, which is going to be set equal to a post method, since when we use the post method, we can actually see the data inside the URL. So if we were to use a get method, we could actually see the data. But because this data is more sensitive, because we have passwords and that sort of thing, I want to use a post method. Okay, so what we need to do now is we could actually go ahead and copy this code down here, then delete it and insert it inside a new file, save it inside the includes folder as signup.inc.php, like so. So now when we do actually run this file, we will actually include a user inside the database, but wait, once we do actually click the form button and go into this file, it will not take us back to the front page and we need to fix that. So inside this file, we're going to go ahead and go to next line. I'm going to say we have a header function inside PHP, which simply takes us to another file. So once it has actually run this code up here, it's going to take us to the front page again. So I'm going to say we have double quotes, location, colon, space, dot dot forward slash because it needs to take us back a directory because I'm inside my includes folder. And then it's gonna load index.php. And we could actually include some kind of success message. So we're gonna say a uh, question mark, sign up is equal to success if you wanted to. 
Now, the last thing we need to include inside this file is right now, because I copy pasted this code inside a new document, right now we don't actually have access to our database connection. So I need to go back to the front page and say we have this include once database connection, copy it and then just delete it because we don't actually need it inside the front page anymore. Go back to the sign up page and include it at the very top here. So now we do actually have access to variable con, which we need to have access to in order to actually connect to the database. So now that we have this, we could actually go back to the front page, refresh. And as you guys can see, we now have a form with a couple of inputs and then a button. Now, what is going to happen now is if I were to actually click the sign up button, it's going to go ahead and run the code inside signup.ink.php. Now, right now, since we haven't modified our insert statement yet, it's just going to create a user called Danny Nelson, blah, 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 inside the database, but it's not going to take the information we typed in inside the input fields. So we need to change that. So inside my uh, signup.ink.php file, right after we have the included database connection, I'm going to create a couple of variables. So I'm gonna go ahead and say we have a variable called first, which is the first name. It's going to be equal to dollar sign underscore post brackets. Now this post variable here is a super global, which simply takes the data we passed on from the form into this document, and it's going to assign it equal to variable first, okay? Now the name of the super global post is going to be equal to if we were to go back to the form here, equal to the name that we assigned the input. So if we want to get the data from this input, we need to refer to the one with the name first. So I'm going to copy this name, go back to the post super global, paste in the name, and then simply copy this statement a couple of times because we need to get all the other results as well, which were, I think about five of them. We're gonna change the second one to last because that's the last name. We're gonna change the third one to email. The fourth one is going to be changed to UID. And the last one is the password. Now, again, right now, there's no security for this password. It has not been hashed or anything when we insert it into the database. I know some people will actually comment on that. This is just a very, very basic signup form. Okay. So now that we have all this data, we can actually go ahead, copy the first name, go down to the SQL code down here and paste in variable first. So I'm just going to do that for all of them. Instead of the last name, Nilsson, I'm just going to paste in last. Instead of the email, I'm going to copy in variable email. And we're just going to continue doing this till we have everything filled out. Like so. So now that we pasted in all the variables inside our insert statement, there's one more thing we need to fix. Because right now I just included the database connection, but because we're already inside the includes folder, I need to delete the includes part inside the path. So we just need to reference to dbh.ink.php without the includes path, okay? So now that we have this, we're basically ready to actually test this out. So I'm gonna go back inside the website, I'm gonna refresh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and type in some information inside the form and then click sign up because now we'll actually take the information from the form and use it inside the insert statement. So I'm gonna write John, though, email could be john at gmail.com. I'm gonna go ahead and set a username as John Doe. I'm gonna set the password as test. Then when I click sign up, you guys can see we get this path in the URL that says sign up equal to success. And now if we were to actually go inside the database and zoom out a little bit for you guys, right now we have two users inside the database. One is called Daniel and one is called Jane. If we were to actually refresh the table, you guys can see that now we have John Doe. So this is how we can actually insert data directly from our website using something like a form. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.